Next stop of the day, Colonial Michelin Mackinac. Mackinac. Just arrived at Fort Michelin Mackinac. We're gonna go back and kick it Colonial style. Gonna get another shot of the bridge here. Found a red coat down there. Let's go straight first. Or you pick. You pick. You decide where we go. I want to see if there's anything straight ahead though. Then we'll have to go into Felicity's house. This could be Looks like she's growing some growing some stuff in her garden down here. go. Big old fireplace. That's her bed. This is a British trader's house, it says here. Mm -hmm. Felicity's British stuff. This one's not a house. It's What is this place? Oh, this is archaeology, so you're supposed to go, I think go down there and find stuff that they found buried here. So I see that. Look how little that spoon is. There's a ring. There's a, there's a ring in there. Felicity does like tea, so that could be her spoon. Could be her teacup, too. Yeah, she does drink tea, too. <laughs> and I look at my book, she has teacups and everything. Uh, this is them. This is when this is them digging for the stuff that they found. This is probably. There you go. Here's all the here's all the pieces of stuff that they found in the ground. Recreational. Dad. <laughs> like recreational, it's all pipes. Domestic. You got some. She never uses scissors. Some silverware. Some scissors. Little pieces of broken bowls and plates and cups. What's that? What? Those are the lines. Those are, those are, look like needles, like sewing needles. Uh, when I look at Felicity's page, it doesn't look like she sews you got either. some personal items, a little bunch of buttons and little pieces of necklaces, beads. That's the word I was looking for. There's some rings up there, some earrings. Occupational, so here's some... These are tools that people use for their jobs. Did you know? Here's structural. Oh, it tells you what everything is up there. It tells you what number it is. Here's the priest's cellar. The priest's house cellar. Looks like that. We'll go back up the stairs and be in the priest's house. Hey, look. It's rock number 69. Um... Why is it so dark down here? Is there anything down here? What'd you do? This again? Inhabitants removed, demolished, or burned Michel Mackinac's buildings when the fort was abandoned in 1781. Nevertheless, archaeologists can discover what these structures look like and how they were built because of physical evidence buried in the soil. Archaeological excavations expose the remnants of rotted logs, which show where the walls were located. A pile of stones and mortar indicates the location of the fireplace and chimneys. The cellar appears as a large depression beneath the floor. Oh, that's why I look at the effect. The location of windows. It's like plaster fragments, the building's gone now. Scraps and pieces of iron hardware provide construction. Now it turned into 
This valuable cool. information allows us to accurately reconstruct and interpret Michel Mackinac's buildings. That was cool. That was like that, uh, yeah. at the Magic Museum. I'll link, put a link to that up here for you if you want to see it. Where they talk about, uh, Pepper's Ghost effects. That was basically what you just saw. Fancy bed. See, now we're back to where we were. Was that close to said? That this is the house where we went down the stairs right here. This was the last house of the row. Time is great for a sore throat. Oregano oh, is good for indigestion. <laughs> Walk right in front of me. So. <laughs> See, I grow a medicinal herb garden. I love it. Yeah, it does a lot of things. We kind of a lot of people going back to that. Right, right. And now. that's kind of, they're definitely using it in concert with medicine that's being shipped in. Exactly. So it's not just like herbal medicinal sorts of things. Mm -hmm. um, but it's kind of, you're using it, it's kind of like how we drink orange juice if you have a cold nowadays, you kind of... We're going to go into the, uh, the priest's house, building number eight, see where the, check out where the priests live. See, there's the, uh, that ladder down there was, that's to the storeroom that we saw when we were in the underground museum. Priest's house is nice and cool. There he is. There's the priestly man praying. See? And there's the blacksmith shop. Which was the next building we were going to come to. <laughs> this is number nine if you're following the site map. <laughs> have y'all been to a blacksmith shop before? Um, I have. You probably haven't though, huh? Have you heard of the word blacksmith before? Do you know what that means? No. That's okay. It's kind of an old word. Blacksmith just means metal worker. So today, like a mechanic or a welder. The jail cell. It's here in the guard house. This is where all the guards of the, of the fort would hang out. You know, big old bed here for them to all share, and they got their tables. Church of St. Anne, and you see the, uh, the steeple up there. We only have one in Felicity Chapel. There you go, there's the church. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. We are in Caroline's house. Caroline must be a merchant, because this is the merchant's house. She's got one of those fancy tent beds. You see there's like a curtain all the way around this bed. Oh, weird. I don't know if I'd like that. Oh, here. Canoes. A birch bark canoe what this is. It's an actual one. Yeah. There's the rooster that she was telling us about. Lyle! Another little model. That flint will fly for, and it should strike the steel. That should create sparks. Those sparks should land in this small pan on the side of the barrel, where a little bit of black powder will be waiting for it. When the sparks touch that black powder, 
that it should ignite and should send a jet of flame through a small toothpick sized hole in the side of the barrel, which should ignite the main charge that will be dumping down the muzzle end. That's a lot of should and a lot of steps. If even one of those steps doesn't work just right, this thing isn't going to fire. And a nice, beautiful, perfect weather day as we've got going on right now, this weapon is about 80% reliable. Which means, take five shots, there's a good chance one of those shots isn't going to work. And that is on a nice day. If it's rainy, snowy, windy, or just a little bit too humid in the air, the chances of these things working drop a little bit further. They're not the most reliable. They're not the most accurate. By themselves, they're not that great of weapons. But in the 18th century, this is what you have and you're going to have to make do. It doesn't matter if you're a soldier fighting for the British, the Americans, French, Russians, Prussians, Austrians, Spanish, they're all using something just like this. They might have different names for it, different style changes on the outside, but it all boils down to smooth metal pipe and flintlock mechanism attached to the side. All those same drawbacks is accuracy and reliability, no matter which army you're fighting for. Touch it, take care, poise your firelock, one, two, cock your firelock, one, two, Handle cartridge. Prime. Shot pan. One, two. Charge with cartridge. Draw rammer. Ram down cartridge. Turn rammer. Surely your firelock. One, two. Make ready. Present. Fire. So that is the long, slow training process of doing this. So let's see if we can speed this up just a little bit with the battlefield command of Run and Low. It's all the same steps, just not all the talking. A well trained soldier expects to do this whole process in around 15 to 20 seconds, which might seem pretty slow compared to our modern weapons, but back then these things can become the machine gun of their day. You just need a lot more of them. Make ready! Present! Fire! Half cock your fire lock. Attachment dismissed. Native American encampment out back of the fort. This is the Anishnabek. There, I put this on selfie mode so I can dip you, dip you guys into the teepee. See what it looks like from the inside. You can see Lake Michigan out that way. We are on the other side of the bridge now, so that's where the, the musket demonstration took place. Down there in that field, you see the, the British flag flying on the flagpole. Here's Nellie's kitchen. Well, these people have a nice house. It smells like fresh paint in here. Bridget and Jen. Oh, this is the commanding officer's house. That's why it's so nice. Well, this is like the head. This is like the head of the fort lived here. Nellie and her sister. The depoisters. De Such a little thing. Meet the depoisters. That's the deep. That's the depoisters. Look how fancy they are. This is Nellie. And here they are, Arendt and Rebecca de Peister, served as Michelin Mackinac's first family for over five years, 1774 to 1779. Here's their parlor. This is where they would entertain their guests in the parlor.